you through the binary phase diagram of the crystallization sequence of a basaltic magma, going from high temperature to low temperature and crystallizing anorthite until we reach the eutectic. Now we can use this exact same phase diagram to explain how a rock would melt as temperature increases of, this, of, of any composition along this diopside to anorthite solid solution. And in fact, you're going to get one of those on the next maybe lab assignment in your class or homework or even an exam. And don't let that make you stumble. What I'd like to do is walk you through that briefly right now. Uh, we'll put it. We'll put the new phase diagram in, and like qualitatively, let's walk through that process before we go on to the actual content of today's lecture. So let's say that we want to do a melting example. So this is just this is just quickly. We're going to go through a melting sequence, and let's say the composition is An thirty Di seventy. Well, we need to put it in the composition. Well, that composition An thirty is right here, which is on the left-hand side of the eutectic. So what we're going to crystallize slash melt, right, primarily is going to be diopside because we're on this compositional side of this tipping point. So as we melt this, going from room temperature up to, let's say, 1500, our pathway, we're going to be below the solidus, below the solidus until we get to 1274. At 1274, the very first drop of magma is going to form. The very first drop of magma is going to have this composition here. We're going to sit at the eutectic, melting both diopside and anorthite crystals until, until we can depart from that eutectic temperature. As we depart, we've melted away all of the anorthite. There will be no anorthite left. All of it melts away at the eutectic. And then we can finally, once that's happened, we can depart from the eutectic and heat up and go in this direction. At each step along the way, we need to be putting in our isotherms labeled A, B, and C, right? Because C is always the pure end member component. B is in the middle and A is on liquidus. Until we get to a temperature of around 1320. 1320, the last drop, or sorry, the last crystal of diopside disappears, and we start to go into the pure liquidus domain. Okay, that would be an example that uh, I know I'll make my students do, is to check their intuition, check the, how they rely on what they learned in the crystallization, and just to flip it, inverse it. It's the exact same process um, of using the graph to do all the calculations. All right, but that wasn't actually the topic I wanted to do today. What I want to explain to you today is a totally different phase diagram, which is a solid solution phase diagram. There are some igneous minerals that form with solid solution. Forsterite, phaolite is one example, and of course, albite, anorthite is another. So in this case, we're going to do an example where the we'll do a, we'll do another uh, cooling crystallization, cooling slash crystallization sequence of, um, of plagioclase solid solution. So we'll just say that of a liquid with a composition of, what am I doing in this example? I've got AN40 albite 60. All right, so that's the composition of our magma described in two components. And notice something in this diagram. There is no eutectic. Also, the solidus, which is this line right here, this is the solidus, it's not horizontal, it's curved. And the liquidus is also kind of curved. And what it does is it produces this concave, convex, uh, liquidus solidus surface, and all the crystallization goes on in this envelope between them. Okay, so it's in this domain where we have both liquid and crystal that's being produced. Now our composition, let's put in a dashed line at that composition. Here it is. Here's our starting composition. And I want to describe to you how we can use the lever rule, how we can use our the slope of the liquid surface to figure out how plagioclase crystallizes from this melt and how solid solution is produced. Okay, that's our goal for today. At each temperature, we are going to do the percent liquid, percent solid, composition solid, composition liquid. So T1 is at 1500 
degrees C, we can put a dot in. Of course, this is our most simple example, right? So we're going to do our percent liquid, percent solid, composition liquid, composition solid. It's above the liquidus, so it is 100% liquid. It is 0% solid. Our composition of liquid is the same as our starting material. AN40, albite 60. And the composition solid is not applicable, NA, because there's none that exists. But we're going to start to cool. And as we start to cool, the very first crystal will form when we hit the liquidus surface right here. And let's go ahead and have that be our T2. Because I want to, I need to explain to you what happens here. It might not be super intuitive, although it is the exact same process as the binary. We're going to draw an isotherm, and we're going to draw, draw it to the right. In fact, this is what you're going to do right here. You're going to draw in a line like so. T2 is at what temperature is that? It was at 1400. We're above 1400. Let's call this at 1420 degrees C. And what this is, is this is the temperature of first crystals. The very first crystal forms from the melt at 1420. Percent liquid, percent solid. Well, this is easy. This is just about 100%. Percent solid is just about 0%. The composition of the liquid, well, only one crystal is formed, so it's not going to have changed at all. It's basically still AN40, albite 60. But we do need to state what the composition of that first solid is. Now, the composition of the very first solid is pretty easy to find. What you have to do is you go along this um, tie line to this point right here, and we drop down. Draw that line nice and straight, like so. And we're also going to draw a line straight down here. For each step along this cooling pathway, we're going to draw two lines. One's going to come on the where it touches the left-hand side of the liquidus, and one's going to touch on the right-hand side of the solidus. And where it touches the solidus, that's the composition of the crystal, and where it touches the liquidus, this tie line is with the composition of the liquid. And we can put in our A, B's, and our C's, and B and C are right here, and they're actually like so close to that dot, and A is way over here. And so we, if we did the lever rule, the A to B is the entire length, that's why it is almost 100%. But that'll make more sense to you in a second. But anyways, the composition of our uh, crystal, we drop down, it's actually really mafic. It's like A, N, what would you say, like 83, A, B, 17. So it, we might even put a little note to ourselves and say that it is surprisingly, surprisingly mafic as a very first crystal that forms from this more um, albidic melt. Well, let's keep going through this crystallization process. We'll do a T3 is at, I picked 1390. So let's just do 1390. 1390 degrees C. Well, where's 1390? Here's 1390. We'll put it right here. So our melt has uh, started to evolve and it is evolving towards a more albidic composition because we're pulling crystals out that are more anorthitic. Yeah, that makes sense, right? I hope so. We're going to draw a tie line in. The tie line goes straight across here, and we're going to put B. Nope, B doesn't go there. Bad. Bad job teaching. Okay, do that. Whoop. There we go. Put that back. Uh-huh. Forgive my mistake. What was that? That was T3. And this is C. This is B. And this is A. We can draw some lines down. There's the line. There's another line. Which is which? Well, here is our comp solid T3. Here is our comp liquid T3 just by dropping down. And our percent liquid and percent solid is by the lever rule of these two. Now, which side, right? If this is our teeter-totter, which side of this is the percent liquid and percent solid? 
Well, we're still really hot, right? So over here, that's going to be our percent solid. And over here, this is going to be our percent liquid. So let's get all this information down. Percent liquid, percent solid, composition liquid, composition solid. I've gone through and I've done my measurements in millimeters, the percent liquid, the, de or the denominator, the length of this line on the sheet of paper that I printed out was 56 millimeters, and the AB length is 38 millimeters, and 38 divided by 56 is 68. Whoops, Ooh, I'm a little sloppy today. Here we go. Let's get rid of that. That is 68%. And our denominator is the same, 56, but the length from B to C was 18, and so that is 32%. So it's still mostly liquid, but we have crystallized solid. And what is the composition of the solid that we've been pulling out? Well, it's right here. I have that as anorthite, ooh, let's see, 68 might be a little higher than that. Let's go, let's go, I see that as, oh wait, what is that? That's the composition of the solid. Composition of the liquids down here, which is anorthite 26, albite 74. The composition of the solid is here, that's eh, about the same, maybe 73, so that's like anorthite 73, albite 27. Okay, I'm just estimating it um, as close as I can along this x-axis. Now, the next temperature we need to do is we're going to need to say what is the temperature at which the very last crystal disappears. Because we're going to march down. We're going to keep crystal crystallizing the melt, crystallizing the melt, crystallizing the melt until the last melt disappears. We never hit a eutectic. And so what we need to do is we need to find the place where our percent Solid is 100% and our percent liquid is 0% or, or nearly so. And that's going to be the place where our bulk composition crosses the solid. So I'm going to put a dot right here. And I'm going to go across to the left. And it's this point right here that the very last drip of magma goes away. We're going to call that T4. T4 is at, what would you say, 1215? 12, 15 degrees C, and this is where the last drop disappears. In this solid solution, there is no eutectic, so there is no thermal valley. It just goes down until the last drop goes away. Let's do our percent liquid, percent solid, composition liquid, composition solid. And in some ways, this is easier because the process doesn't change. Our percent liquid, we need to put in our A, B's, and our C's, right? So there's C, here is B, and here is A. So our percent liquid is essentially zero. Percent solid is essentially 100. The composition of our liquid has gotten highly evolved. Let me drop down. It's something like... Um, AN6, AB94, and the composition of our solid, well, we drop down straight from here. It has to be what we started with, uh huh. And so it is going to be AN40, AB60. At any colder temperature, what ends up happening is the last drop goes away, we jump all the way over, and as we go colder and colder, we're just in the pure plagioclase domain and so if we wanted to put in like just for um, clarity's sake we could put in a t5 at a thousand t5 at a thousand degrees c well our percent liquid is zero our percent solid is 100 our composition liquid therefore is not applicable and our composition so, uh, solid has to be what we started with AN40, AB60. The same process could be done in reverse, right? If you were given a solid rock and you wanted to go up, just follow the same way, okay? And maybe we'll look at it real quick in just a second. But 
the type of rocks I want you to be thinking about and textures when we think about this kind of solid solution is plagioclase crystals. So there's a scanning electron microscope image of a plagioclase showing beautiful oscillatory zoning. And this oscillatory zoning could be an artifact of this crystallization process where the composition of the solid that is being produced is evolving through time as the magma evolves through time. I think that's a really neat prediction. Um, that this graph graphing makes. Okay, so I said maybe we'll we'll just do one last thing here because you know that the professor is going to make you think independently, right? It'd be a bad professor if he didn't. So if um, I just taught you a crystallization from this composition, what if we instead need to do a melting from this composition? Well, we we would heat up, heat up, heat up. The very first crystal would form um, would melt away right here. The composition of that melt would be right here. And then the melt would increase as we keep climbing up this liquidous surface. We would be able to put in tie lines like this at any given temperature where we would have our C, our B, and our A. The amount of liquid be, would be continuously increasing, which is the length from B to A. That is always going to be our percent liquid. And then the last uh, crystal would disappear right here. It would have a, a pretty uh, anorthotic composition. And then we would depart from that line and go up. So that is our process of solid solution. I would recommend you look like a Google search for binary phase diagram solid solution and you'll see most of those in textbooks of albite to anorthite or phaolite and forsterite. Those are the ones that I use in my class at least.